Hey folks, here we are for game four with the Damia Surge Jack, and we're playing against a new lot of commanders here. We have uh, the Sapperling commander from, from last game. We have Saskia the Unyielding, which is a pretty sweet commander. I like the color combination, even though it is missing blue, which is the best color. Uh, just letting you guys know, in case y'all didn't know, blue is the best color. Uh, then we have Rashmi over here, which is also pretty sweet. Uh, I've seen different iterations of this. I've seen combo decks. I've also seen, like, control type decks that just, you know, will cast spells and get value and cast counter spells and get more value and things like that. Uh, and, you know, we're playing Damia, of course. And we have a pretty capable hand. I like it. It's not the most explosive hand I've ever seen with this deck, but it's it's pretty sweet. Uh, I, I'm on the draw here, which is also nice. Or excuse me, I'm on the play here, which is which is pretty good. Uh, so we have a ley line of anticipation, which can allow me to play my threats at instant speed. Uh, it's a little tech in this deck. I'm not sure if it should be in here, but it's nice whenever you see it in your starter hand like this. So I can play a turn two Rhystic Study while flashing in a, 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 an end of turn Llanowar Elf. So I decide this is a pretty capable hand. Uh, hopefully I can draw some cards off this Rhystic Study. And also I have Basalt Monolith here, which will allow me to get out Damia in a pretty reasonable fashion if I want to do that. So as an opening hand action, I put the Ley Line into play, play Command Tower, and pass the turn. This player plays a Tap Land. It is a Man Land, a 2-2 two -two black and green elemental creature with Death Touch. This player plays Exotic Orchard, taps it, and passes the turn. This taps for... Uh, lands that a color that a land an opponent controls mm -hmm. could produce. And this player plays a vivid land and passes. So everybody's off to a pretty slow start. I'm happy not to see any like turn one soul rings or any kind of fast shenanigans. So here I just play my land war elf, land war elves. Then I play Rhystic Study. Not at instant speed. I'll go ahead and play this first because I can't play this in response to a spell. It's whenever an opponent casts a spell. So in order to ensure that I get the first trigger. Mm -hmm. I go ahead and just play it out. And this player plays a fungus card, uh, and he chooses not to pay, which is nice. I pick up an Urborg, which is okay. The main reason Urborg is in my deck is because I run Necro, and uh, I want to cast it reliably. And since I don't have cards like Dark, uh, Dark Ritual or Cabal Ritual, then it's harder for me to cast Necro in a three-color deck. He just plays another land and passes. He or she. This player plays a storage land and then puts some, a storage counter on it. So here I find Utopia Sprawl, which is fine. And here I just definitely made a mistake. Uh, I can do all of this at instant speed, so why would I, why would I do that on my turn? But at least I only did that and I, I passed with, with Vincer up. So I have the option of flashing in Basalt Monolith or Vincer. That's one cool thing about Leyline is you can pass the turn with Counter Magic up, and then you can decide to play threats that normally would be Sorcery Speed at Instant Speed if they don't do anything that's worth countering. So this player plays Necro Genesis, which is a pretty cool card in the Sapperlink Synergy deck. Not worth Vincer. He attacks me because he doesn't like what I'm doing here, and that makes sense. Uh, I have the... The most explosive board presence out of everybody here, I think, so it makes sense for him to be attacking me, even though it's only for one damage. And this player plays a Necro. Uh, does not have enough mana to pay for Rhystic Study. And I don't know what's going on over here. Uh, when I see Necro, I immediately think, like, Storm or Doomsday or something like that, uh, which is harder to do in a non-blue deck. But either way, I, I don't want to I don't want to find out what this Necro is going gonna, is gonna to cook up. So I decide I'm just going to go ahead and Vincer and buy myself a little time. There aren't very many spells that I would have countered there, but Necro is one of them for sure. Uh, it just like this seems to be a combat-based deck, uh, based on his commander, of course. But I don't know what's going on with the Necro thing. Uh, it could be that this is a a distraction or like a misdirection to make you think that he's combat-based, and then he just combos off. So I'm not gonna. I don't want to see that happen. So I just decide I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, bounce the Necro. This player plays a Ponder and Pace for Rhystic Study, which is nice, uh, because he cannot put a storage counter on his land now. And I draw Telepathy, which is also not a bad pickup. Here, again, don't quite know what I was doing. Uh, I could have done all of this at instant speed, and I just played Damia. Uh, I should have just passed the turn, representing more potential uh, interaction, and then cast Damia at end, at end of his turn. 
I mean, I guess everybody's tapped out here, so it's not like an unreasonable time, but uh, I definitely should have just done that at instant speed. I don't know what I was thinking. This player plays a fetch land, and he knows that he can tap it as a swamp because Urborg is in play, so he does not bother fetching. Then he plays Reclamation Sage and pays, and then kills my Rhystic Study. But, I mean, Leyland of Anticipation or Basalt Monolith, either one of those, or even Utopia Sprawl, were probably better targets just because uh, Damia is going to refill my hand next turn unless someone kills that. He's not going to kill it. He just tapped out. Uh, Rhystic Study's done its job. It's done. Everything that I wanted to do with Rhystic Study is done. Uh... So he makes that play. Maybe he had no other better plays, and he just wanted to just interact in some way. Uh, he dials back on the Necro plan and decides to play Iroas, which is a pretty cool card. Uh, I did not read this card very well when it first come in, came into play, and I ended up making like a small mistake later on, I think. Uh, this player plays their commander and passes, and I get to draw some cards with Damia, which is pretty sweet. Here I decided to just go ahead and play Telepathy. And now you can see everyone's hands. Uh, this guy has a bunch of Sapperling cards. This player has some pretty sweet stuff going on, including Aur Aurelia. Eternal Witness to get stuff back. Necro that we knew about. Plains, Plateau, and Sun Petal Grove. This player has Artisan of Kozilek. Pretty cool card, kind of expensive though. Coiling Oracle, go ahead and get the ramp going. Mines Dilation, which is uh, definitely a very powerful card. Uh, it's a miniature omniscience. Uh, what it reminds me of is another card. I forgot the name of it, but uh, you reveal your, whenever they cast a spell, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, it goes into play. Mm -hmm. Somebody who remembers that card, just let me know in the comments or whatever. Uh, we also have Nalia mm -hmm. and Reality Shift. So this guy can Reality Shift me, which is not exactly great for me. I'm going to be able to dump out my hand essentially here. Uh, I think the only thing that makes sense to play right now is Azusa because it will allow me to get some of these lands out of my hand uh, so that I don't I can draw more cards with Damia. But I believe I can just basically exhaust all the resources in my hand by the time it's my next turn. And I don't see anything in anyone's hands that's too scary. I'm going to go ahead and let's see if I can do something like this. Real quick. Get it nice and organized. So we don't have these windows taken over. But that's definitely what it's like in the game. Uh, people probably don't like telepathy online. It's way better in real life. You should look at everyone's hands because it's in the form of cards. It's not these obnoxious windows everywhere. So I play Azusa. And just use up my mana. I played Arbor Elf as well. Shock in the Overgrown Tomb and pass. Because now I can play Miri's Guile and Sakura Tribe Order at instant speed if I want to. And draw a fresh 7 with Damia. He plays yet another... Fungus Synergy card. And this player plays Saskia and names me, which totally makes sense. Let me look at what I'm doing compared to everybody else. Just, I'm definitely the target here. I haven't done anything too, too, too scary, uh, but I do have lots of mana in play, and I, I can cast stuff at instant speed. I can see everyone's hands. Which is nice. Uh, he, he picked up a Vampiric Tutor this turn, which is pretty nice. Um, he could probably set something up with that next turn. I'm not quite sure what, but, I mean, if you can search your library for any card, that's pretty good. And then he chooses to attack me. Uh, and here, this is where I kind of made the misplay. I thought I was going to be able to to block and trade, uh, like, my Vencer away or whatever to kill, to kill Saskia here. But even though it doesn't, I don't mind keeping my life total high. Uh, the reason why it doesn't work is because this prevents all damage that would be dealt to attacking creatures, and creatures have menace. So I had to block with two creatures here, and I ended up just throwing away my Vincer, which is fine. Uh, throwing away the Vincer for six damage is not that bad. Also, he, he has done his job. Vincer bounced the Necro, that's all I really wanted him to do. This player plays Coiling Oracle. So now I have just complete knowledge of what's going on over here. He picks up a Pact of Negation. Uh, which is pretty nice uh, to go with what's going on here. He has a reality shift for my Damia if he wants to do that, and then he has Pact of Negation to stop me. Uh, so this player is actually putting up a fight. Sugary Pimp Stick is putting up a fight. Then he cycles, and I think he found another land when he cycled. So here I just do what makes sense. Uh, yes, I could, like, I thought about potentially not playing all of my cards here so that I could represent Counter Magic 
uh, that would fight what he's doing. Like, let's say he mm-hmm. chooses to reality shift here by instep, mm-hmm. so I don't get to draw any cards. Then um, I could pass with open mana through his instep, and maybe he doesn't do it. But here I just decide, whatever. If he's going to reality shift, he's going to reality shift, so I'm just going to deploy my threats. And, uh, you know, I have Miri's Guile here to find something, even if Damia dies. Hopefully that'll help. And then he puts a storage counter on here. And right at this exact moment, I'm thinking he's got one colorless mana. He can make a blue with the Vivid Grove. Uh, he's definitely going to reality shift Damia. Why wouldn't he do it? Um, this guy casts his Vampiric Tutor. This person casts their Vampiric Tutor. Um, setting up for next turn. He puts the storage counter on. And then just does not reality shift. Uh, maybe he's thinking he doesn't need to be untapped all the way to deal with what I have. I mean, one counter may not beat... May not beat seven cards. So it probably was a better idea just to, to reality shift here. But maybe he's thinking that with this pact he will be able to, to do it. Here the order doesn't matter too much. If I had a top or some way to draw a card and play, I would put Miri's Guile in the stack first, then resolve Damia, then resolve Miri's Guile. And I, you should probably just do that as a general rule anyways because you just get to see more cards that way. But here I did it in the wrong order. So I looked at a couple of cards, and then this guy just decides to pack it in for no reason. Uh, he had action. He had a reality shift that could have killed my Damia. He also had the packing negation, which is the only thing that I can see in anyone's hand that would put up any kind of resistance versus what I, what I plan to do. Uh, so here I picked up Fearsome Path, which is great. I have a bunch of lands. This is why we run the low land count, and this is why we run cards like Azusa. Uh, look at this. I would be not drawing any cards if I didn't have Azusa in play. It would be forever before I'd start drawing some meaningful amount of cards. So I put all these lands in play, all the ones I can. I still have two in hand um, with the plan of maybe playing Everflow and Chalice, maybe playing, or definitely playing Fearsome Path at instant speed at some point to pick up Runescard Demon. Uh, I don't even think I need to play the Everflow and Chalice here. It's nice to draw an additional card off Damia, but it's not necessary, I don't think. So this player draws Kodama's Reach and casts it. And he also has this pretty sweet card. Uh, you can choose a type, and he would choose Green Sapperling, of course, and then he can pump out 1-1 one, one creatures of the chosen type. Mm-hmm. Goes great with his deck. And then he Skull Clamps something to draw some more cards, and doesn't draw anything, mm-hmm. you know, super threatening. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's going to stop me. Phyrexian Tower's a pretty nice mm-hmm. one in the right deck. I'm not sure about his deck, mm-hmm. but he can flood the board with creatures, so maybe it's worth it just to have a land that you can sacrifice things with he can equip skull clamp to something that's not a 1-1 like this guy this guy and then um, sacrifice it to create mana and draw cards which is not bad synergy the Saskia player drew the card he vampiric, vampiric tutored for which was stone hewer giant so now when I'm looking at this necro and I'm looking at the cards in his hand uh, I'm, I'm thinking that he's a like a Voltron style deck or like definitely still combat based and he just has Necro for card advantage and I guess that's that's the main reason it's in his deck uh, mm-hmm. just to draw a bunch of cards and keep the gas flowing you pay a little life to draw cards mm-hmm. maybe he has other ways to gain life in his deck who knows mm-hmm. this could probably get like a gain life equipment or something uh, Stone Hewer is a pretty sweet card it's like a big nasty Stone Forge Mystic style card but it just puts uh, equipment into play repeatedly and you can attack with this because he has Vigilance and then tap it post combat Although in most cases, especially here, he would probably tap it first and just give up on the 4 damage to get whatever that equipment is and put it in play. So again, he attacks me. I decide to block with Azusa and Sakura Tribe Elder uh, with the intention of sacrificing Sakura Tribe Elder and just throwing away my Azusa, which has done a lot of work. Uh, I'm already getting mana from Arbor Elf. I'm getting tons of mana, or a reasonable amount, with the Trop and Utopia Sprawl. And then Arbor, or excuse me, Land of War Elves creates uh, mana. So... I mean, in the long run, it might have been better. If I knew this game was going to go on for a long time, I'd probably block with Llanowar Elf here because Azusa allows me to keep uh, the lands flowing. But I know what's happening here, and I don't see anything in their hands that can stop me, so I'm just going to go with the game plan. He plays Stone Hewer, taps out, and passes the turn. So here I play Fearsome Path. I get Runescard Demon, play Runescard Demon, and get Primal Surge. Now I did it the correct way this time, where I get to look at additional cards. I uh, don't draw any of the bad cards that I don't want to draw with Damia this turn, so I decided to just go ahead and go for the Primal Surge. And you guys have seen this a couple of times now. I'm going to skip past it. Uh, that's all she wrote on this one. 
just skipping to the end. Uh, I wish this happened a little better. Uh, I'll take this time to talk about some of the bugs on MTGO. Uh, I don't like to complain a whole lot, but uh, a lot of the games don't work because there's buggy replays, especially when someone concedes. It seems like it just it bugs the game and makes it so the replay doesn't work. And they, they've been told about this plenty of times, and they chose not to work on it because what they care about is bringing in new players more than they care about uh, working on fixing the program and keeping their already existing players, which I think is a poor business choice, but that's on them. They can choose to do it however they want. Um, and here's another example of just like, I mean, this game's very old now, and the client's been out for a while. Uh, they could get rid of some of this choppiness. I realize that I am doing a lot here and that I'm putting a lot of permanents into play, but there's no reason why it should lag that bad. Uh, on a on a decent computer and a program that doesn't require a ton uh, of or a, a lot not much information is being used compared to other games is what I mean like this is just text on cards that should not be too hard to set up compared to some of these other like really advanced games uh, but enough with me ranting about that uh, I cast Primal Surge my deck goes into play I crack to fetch land mm -hmm. Windswept Heath again and uh, draw a card with Chitrog Monster and Labman so that's it for this game